Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about finding trig derivatives using identities. So first we're going to start off by just reviewing some of the trig identities that you might want to use in problems like this. So one's already written up here for you. This is the Pythagorean identity. It says that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. In order to get the other two Pythagorean identities, I need to divide this entire equation by sine squared x. That will give me one identity. And then if I divide the entire equation by cosine squared x, that gives me the other identity. So if I divide this whole thing by sine squared x first, sine squared x divided by sine squared x is 1. Cosine squared x divided by sine squared x is cotan squared x. And 1 divided by sine squared x is cosecant squared x. Now I'm going to take my original Pythagorean identity and I'm going to divide the entire thing by cosine squared x. Sine squared x divided by cosine squared x is tan squared x. Cosine squared x divided by cosine squared x is 1. And 1 divided by cosine squared x is secant squared x. There are our three Pythagorean identities. Now the other identities that we're going to want to look at are the double angle identities. So recall that sine of 2x is equal to 2 sine x cosine x. And for cosine 2x, there's actually three formulas. So the first one is cosine squared x minus sine squared x. The second one is 2 cosine squared x minus 1. And the last one is 1 minus 2 sine squared x. So in number one, I have y equals 6 sine of 5x cosine of 5x. Now, I don't need to use an identity. I could use the product rule here and say that 6 sine of 5x is my first and cosine of 5x is my second. However, there's going to be a chain rule when I take both derivatives of each of the trig functions. And the product rule is just lengthy, right? So instead, I'm going to try and get this to look like one of my identities. 6 sine of 5x cosine of 5x looks most similar to this sine of 2x formula. So the x that's matching up here is 5x. So in order to replace this in here, I'm going to have to double. So this is actually going to become sine of 10x when I write it in my double angle formula because I'm going backwards and now since there's a 2 here and this was a 6 when I'm going backwards I have to half it right because I multiplied by 2 to go this way so I have to half it to go backwards so 6 divided by 2 is 3 so now I've just rewritten y I haven't taken a derivative yet but now, in order to take the derivative of y, I just need a chain rule. I don't also need a product rule like I did up here. So now when I find y prime, I keep the 3, and I'm going to take the derivative of sine of 10x using a chain rule. The derivative of sine is cosine. I leave the 10x alone. And then I multiply by the derivative of 10x, which is just 10. I can rewrite this a little bit. If I do 3 times 10, I get 30 cosine 10x for y prime. Number two, I have y equals 3 sine of 8x cosine of 8x. Again, I could use a product rule here. I would get the same answer. It's just going to take a long time. So instead, I'm going to rewrite this using that sine of 2x formula. So this is already in the expanded version. So if this is 8x, I'm going to have to double this. So now this becomes sine of 16x. And again, since there is a 2 here, in order to go to the sine of 2x, I have to half that coefficient in the front. So 3 divided by 2 is just 3 halves. I'm going to leave it like that. Now when I take a derivative, again, I'm using chain rule where sine is the outside, 16x is considered your inside. So y prime is 3 halves. Derivative of sine is cosine. I leave the inside, the 16x alone. Multiply by the derivative of 16x, which is 16. I can do 3 halves times 16. So 16 divided by 2 is 8 times 3 is 24. So I have 24 times cosine of 16x. Number 3. This no longer looks like 1 and 2, so I'm not going to be able to use the sine of 2x formula. This one matches most closely with cosine of 2x. But cosine of 2x is equal to cosine squared x minus sine squared x. And I have a 3 in the way here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to factor a 3 out. So I have 3 times cosine squared x 
minus sine squared x. Now this formula matches exactly with this formula up here. So I can replace the cosine squared x minus sine squared x with cosine of 2x. So now I have 3 cosine 2x. And again, careful with your notation here. I haven't taken a derivative yet. I've just rewritten the original function. So now when I take a derivative, now that f is going to become f prime, I bring down the 3, and now I'm doing a chain rule. Cosine is the outside. 2x is the inside. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. I leave the 2x alone, and I need to multiply by the derivative of that angle or the derivative of the inside. The derivative of 2x is 2. I can clean this up a little bit. 3 times 2 is 6, and I have a negative here, so I get negative 6 times sine of 2x. f of x is equal to 2 co squared x minus 1. This matches up perfectly with cosine of 2x. And from here, I can take a derivative using the chain rule, where cosine is your outside, 2x is your inside. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. I leave the 2x alone times the derivative of the inside or the derivative of the angle is 2. And then I just rewrite that with the 2 in front. just looks a little bit nicer. So I have negative 2 sine of 2x. Number 5, I have f of x is equal to cosine cubed x. Now, with this notation, what this really means is cosine of x cubed. We just write it like this. That's a notation that we use when we have an exponent attached to a trig function. But this is really what it means. So when I look at it like this, I can see that I'm going to use a chain rule where cosine of x is your inside and then something to the third is the outside. So now when I find f prime, I'm essentially doing a power rule first. So I bring the 3 to the front. I leave the cosine x alone, drop that exponent by 1. So it becomes to the second times the derivative of the inside piece. So the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. And in order to clean this up, I'm going to bring the negative to the front. So I have negative 3. I rewrite cosine of x squared as cosine squared x. That's a notation that we use. And then times sine x. Number 6, y equals 1 over 3 cosine squared 5x. So I see that I have a cosine squared in the bottom down here. I can use a reciprocal identity to rewrite y. So I know that 1 over cosine x is equal to secant x. So I'm actually going to pull a 1 third out and then rewrite the 1 over cosine squared of 5x as secant squared 5x. Now, what this allows me to do now is just take the derivative of secant squared as opposed to using a quotient rule up here. I'm going to rewrite the one-third secant squared similar to the way that I rewrote number 5. So I'm going to write this as one-third secant of 5x squared. So now I'm going to do a chain rule where that secant of 5x is the inside and then essentially the one-third is the coefficient and then something squared is that outside. So now when I apply a power rule, I do two times a third, so I have two-thirds in front. I leave the inside alone, secant of 5x, drop the exponent by one to the first power. So now that's the derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, times the derivative of the inside. So now when I take the derivative of secant of 5x, I'm doing a chain rule again secant is your outside and the 5x is the inside. I know that the derivative of secant x is secant x tan x, but I don't have just x here, I have 5x. So it's gonna be secant of 5x tan of 5x times the derivative of that angle or the derivative of the inside is five. And now I can just clean stuff up. So five times two is 10, so I have 10 thirds out front secant of 5x times secant of 5x gives me secant squared 5x times tan of 5x. Number seven. This is similar to number six in that I don't want to use a quotient rule, so I'm first going to pull out a coefficient of a half, and then I know if I have one over cotan of 3x, that's equal to tan of 3x. And now I can just use a chain rule. So y prime is going to be 1 half 
The derivative of tan is secant squared. And I don't have a plain old x there. I have a 3x times the derivative of 3x is 3. And if I clean that up, I have 3 halves secant squared of 3x. That's it for trig derivatives using identities. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Have a great day.